long time <laughs> okay well good evening everybody and uh welcome back to our sunday night offering an astronomy outreach the sunday night astronomy show hey. Hey. <laughs> big hands big hands uh my name is chris Kerwin of astronomy by the bay and first of all i'd like not. to welcome back and you're not right <laughs> i'd like to welcome back our uh, normal co-host uh mr paul owen from the moon shadow observatory in hampton new brunswick yeah, evening, paul <laughs> that way, no, that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is worse than Hollywood Squares. <laughs> and Mr. Mike Powell from the PFO Observatory here in St. John. Yay. Hey, Mike. Hey. And tonight and? we have a special guest joining us this evening who's actually a member of our local <laughs> club. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Kathy Adams. Good evening. Hey. Uh, hey. hey. Kathy has been diligent. Kathy has been diligently working away on capturing beautiful images of some of the planets, and uh, this technique certainly takes some practice and manipulation of software, uh, but it can turn into uh, some pretty great results, and Kathy's going to explain to us how she does it, uh, does her images captures, and how she turns them into amazing results. So welcome to the show, Kathy. Yeah, thank Good you. Good to have you here. All righty. Wonderful. Um, yeah, wonderful. Also on tonight's program, uh, we got a Bino Bud. He's going to be back with another fine binocular target of the week. Uh, this week's target is something called the Davis's dog. Yeah. I've never really heard of this one. I don't know if it involves a fire hydrant or if it involves uh, dog treats, but whatever. We'll go you wouldn't want to be a tourist at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. And Paul's going to join us again with another interesting Rowena's Fun Facts episode for us. And I'll be offering you uh, a quick view of what to look for in our night sky this week coming up. And, of course, we're going to have all your wonderful photo submissions, and I got a pile of them this week, like a, like a, literally like a pile. Quite, quite a few. Yeah, really good. So uh, another busy show. Okay, so sit back, folks, and grab your favorite beverage and uh, snack, or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. And uh, remember, this is a family-friendly live broadcast. We talked about this before. <laughs> we, always, we always say that before we start. Uh, so if you have any questions about tonight's guy, we're more than happy to answer them here for you. So let's get started with tonight's program. And we'll say hello to everybody out on Facebook and YouTube. Looks like we're all up running. Hello from the Backyard Fire Pit Observatory. Awesome. Je there, oh, Jeff. Wow. Yeah, good stuff. Harold, good evening. Jamie. And uh, we got a whole pile of people here on Facebook, too. We'll say all to hello, everybody, all together. How's that? Hello, everybody. Hello. There. <laughs> Okay, Kathy's going to start us out with um, how she captures images, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, using her uh, telescope. And uh, actually, that image behind her is captured with just a six-inch uh, telescope. It's amazing detail that she has there uh, for a six-inch telescope. It's un unbelievable. I couldn't believe those uh, right, when I saw what you were turning out in that small of a telescope. Like, that's not much bigger than these little guys here. No, it's not very big. I was mm. super pleased with for the size of it. And what I can pull out of it, but it takes a lot of technique surprised. too. Yeah, and you're uh, you're you you've mastered <coughs> that technique really well. So we want to start from the beginning, how you how you capture that image uh, from your video. Of course, we're talking about taking a video and stacking those images on top of each other to make a final image. So um, Kathy's going to carry it away. So take it away, Kathy. Okay, I start out. It's my little Celestron, uh, and I'm using a ZWO. 224 planetary camera, which I absolutely love, best thing I have bought. Um, I am using, to catch my images, I'm using SharpCap, and I'm going to share my screen. So give me a sec here. And, oh, hand. There we go. 
Yeah. Bear with me. We're going to go straight over to my shark cat. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Good. That is not my image. I wish oh. it was. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay. it was, but well, thanks, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Kathy, and we're going to sign off. Yeah, we're going to talk about so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> wow, I thought going to be better than this. Yeah. Oh, I can I make a picture it. like that. I wish I could. <laughs> I capture it in here, and the, this is not going to give me all the details, but I capture it. I start off getting it in as big a screen as I possibly can, and then I reduce it to a smaller screen. I start my capture. And this, again, isn't going to let me do it. But I usually take a four-minute capture. Um, I adjust my gain and I adjust my exposure to suit so that I as, get as good an image as I possibly can. From there, I end up with something. Can you see this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I get something that absolutely discouraged me because I looked at it and thought, oh, this sucks. This was the little video I get. And it's not going to... Let me, here we go. That is the image. And when I first saw that, I thought that it's nothing. And it really isn't an awful lot, but that is, I'm just gonna show a couple seconds of it. That's the image that I'm gonna start. There's, in this particular one, I think there's 18,000 separate frames of this video. So I'm gonna pop out. So I take that video and I work with Auto Stacker. And we'll just stop that. And go to auto stacker again. Auto stacker is where I'm going to stack and where I have been stacking all my images. And I open my image, and this is that particular image. So um, auto stacker is a free program. It's a right? free program. <clears throat> yeah. And you're it's using SharpCap program. to capture. SharpCap to capture, and then auto stacker to take that video and stack all those images. And that one had down here 20,989 images. Okay. Um, which is a lot of images. I tick off for image stabilization planetary. Basically, at this point, I have left all the other settings pretty much as they were. Um, I will. I did tell it to take 25% of that 20,000 images, and I believe it goes through and it, it picks the best of those 20,000. These settings I have left exactly as they were. Um, Again, I was watching a, a YouTube video on it, and it did suggest that I just leave them. So I have so far. Drizzle, I play with. Um, I've got it turned off, which is going to keep the image that size. If whoops, if I pop the image up to 1.5, it's going to produce a little larger image for me. And I do that sometimes, but this particular one, I just kept it. No drizzle on it. And... I load in a dark, my dark files, which, whoops, load my master dark, and I just open into my computer, and I happen to know that is the matching dark, so I just open it. Um, and the dark file is just my camera. I put the cap back on it and leave the settings exactly as they were when I was videoing the, the Jupiter and take... I think 50 or 60, because I'm not sure how many to take. So I take 50 or 60. So those are individual and images? Kathy, individual. Are they, are they like on, they're not like, you're not collecting a movie or? No, I'm idea. not collecting a movie. It's individual. And it collects them as PNGs. And I have not okay. changed that because it's worked. And I wasn't sure if I had to change it. Again, I am still learning this program. I've only mm -hmm. been, I've only done a couple dozen, oh, a dozen maybe. Okay. Um, so I, and I change things every time I go along. Once I've loaded my dark in, I tell it to stack. And I'm not going to tell it to stack now. It will go through. Well, I'll start it. It will go through, through all of these. It'll start buffering. It'll go through the reference frames and aligning and stacking. And it can take five or ten minutes, or it can take a lot longer, depending on how many images I have and the complexity of each image. When it's done, I have it set so that it automatically, and I've set it through here, that it automatically opens in Registrax, Registrax, pardon me, for wavelet editing. Uh, and that's why I'm not going to stack it now because I've already done it and I've got it open in Registrax. It will open up in Registrax. 
And this was a program that I found extremely intimidating when I first used it. But again, if you Google on YouTube, there's some really good by the company, by Registrax, there's some pretty good um, tutorials on it. The first thing I look at is at the image, I flip over to my histogram. And I like looking at a log base. I like looking at it because it gives it that whale shape, which again was came from one of the um, tutorials. It said to click on your log base, and once you've got that whale shape, uh, you're you're in the right direction. But I can see that my red, green, and blue aren't particularly balanced very well. So I flip up to to the balancing tool, and I have found. Most of the time, if I click auto balance, it brings them all nicely into alignment. And I usually just leave them sitting right there. I don't minimize them because I did find if you hit them and minimize them, they shrink and you have to try to pull them back out again. So I just close them up because I'm, I'm done with them. But I wanna get this image. It's still pretty blurry. It's still out of focus. There's not a lot of detail. So I want to start working on that image. And the first thing I do, again, is I double click on an area of it so that when I bring it up in the zoomed, it will click into that area. And I can keep an eye on what's what's happening in the big window. These are the layers that I work with. And there are a variety of settings here that you can work with with your layers. You can use the default filter. I'm using the Gaussian, but the default filter takes it down to minimal tools. I prefer working in the Gaussian because I can do some work in getting rid of noise and I can do some sharpening. These are the layers, and these layers are like paper stacked on top of each other. You're working with the top layer and it's gonna have the most immediate changes seen in it so i am going to pull the i always pull the right the slider right over to 100 and you can start to see some of the detail coming out if you right click on it it'll take it back it's blurry pull it right over to 100. that's still very blurry so here's where i start pulling in and raising i'm going to do some sharpening in this layer first i always work with this layer first because i can come back to it um, as I want to. And you can see that it's sharpening up. But wow. as I go high, I get a lot of noise pulled in there and it's a little bit over sharpened. You can also see I've got two moons that come out. So I don't tend to jump up that far. I don't like an over sharpened image. I like them sharp, but not over sharp. You can see some noise. So I will bring up, <coughs> put out a little bit of, pardon me, noise. And I do it in very small increments, not not large increments. I'm okay with that right now. So I would go on to layer two. And each subsequent layer has a little bit less dramatic impact. You can see when I pull over here, I don't have the same drama, the same massive change in my image. And I again, this came from one of the tutorials. It did say suggest that it, you can pull back so that you're sort of working on a diagonal with your sliders. They don't have to be the same all at a hundred each time. And again, I'm going to start doing some sharpening in this layer. It won't have as dramatic an effect, but it will have an effect. And I am going to get a little bit of noise. So I will pull a little bit of noise out in this layer. I could go back and pull it in this layer. However, any noise adjustments that I make in that layer, have a radical as you can see even moving it two up it gets quite fuzzy quite blurry so i'm going to pull it back again and then i work in the third layer and i do the same thing and i pull that layer up to about where i want it and i think that's about where i had it last time and i it worked nicely and i do my sharpening again in here and i'm always watching this image but i watch this one to make sure it doesn't get too ghastly sharp and again i'm seeing a little bit of noise so i always correct it in this layer i correct noise here if it's a lot of noise because in that first layer you can really blur out an image fast 
Layer four and layer five, I haven't been touching. And again, that came from one of the tutorials by Registrax on their website. I think they had a link to it. But I will pull it up a small amount because it's going to give me the finest details. And you might not always see those until you're getting close to the end. But I do pull it up a little. I don't very often sharp do any denoising in this layer. It's predominantly some sharpening. Now, if you want, and I didn't realize you could do this I because it was an accident. If you click over on the white area, well, now it's not going to do it. All that there, it shows you what you started with. Wow. If you click onto this area, and it's a, a left click, not a right click. So there's what I started with, and there's what I've got happening now. Now, somewhere in along the line, I lost those two moons, but I can find those moons again if I want to in in Photoshop, and that's generally what I do. So one step that I had been missing, and I'm fairly happy with that because it looks like to me it's a little over sharpened. <clears throat> However, I when I when I increase the size in, in um, Photoshop, I don't still I won't see that heavy sharpening. Do all. If you don't hit do all, it'll tell you you haven't hit do all. Are you do you want to do it? So you hit do all and you'll see it actually processing it and it brought back my two moons hmm. I then hit save image and when I save this image it will come up with the same these are the whole pile of little experiments um, I always flip on the end of it reg so that I know I put it that image through registrar already and then I just close it out and I open it in Photoshop and I'm gonna have to open it in Photoshop because just before the show, my computer updated. <laughs> <laughs> I was just well, just, be, just before the show is good. During yeah. the show, that's a little harder. Yeah, well, I lost my camera and I lost everything else, and I, I was talking to it a little bit. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, nice little camera. <laughs> yeah, that's what I called it my nice little camera. Yeah. And, um, maybe, uh, where are we? I'm going to actually. Do it in registrax and just I'm, I'm going to let people know that uh, whoever's asking questions here, um, Mike is trying to answer some on Facebook. Paul, I don't know if you're watching YouTube or not. Uh, uh, but, no, I'm not. Okay, uh, but we will we will ask your questions as soon as uh, as soon as Kathy's done here for sure. Yeah, and if I'm going too fast and there's questions, just show at me. Okay. I am going to save it again because somewhere along the line it got chewed up with uh, with with the Windows update. So I'm going to open it up, and that was one of the end results. But I am going to open it up in Facebook, and I just have to find where it, where it happily put it. So bear with me, guys. It'll only take me a minute. Okay. No problem. Yeah, it'll only take a second because I recognize the numbers. This was me because I was really working on a whole pile of different things. There it is, right there. I don't think we have any real questions yet in YouTube. Uh, looks like it's okay. okay. That is the image that I got coming out of first Auto Stacker and then Registax. And That's incredible. Which I was I was pleased from what, with. From I what you started with, it's unbelievable. Yeah, from what I started with, and it shocked me because when I saw the videos of it, I thought this is gonna be absolutely nothing. Hmm. Now I don't particularly like a square, so what and I wanna make it a little bigger anyway, so I always take it down to the proportions I want. And once I'm happy with where I've got it, I just say that's fine. And I can't really see what's going on there. So I am going to increase the image size, leaving it at 72. I'm going to put it up to 500 and see what we might be a little more visible, a little more visible. Uh, now I'm going to edit this image because to me, it's still a little dull. It's still a little flat. I would like to give it a little more depth. So I'm going to do the stretching. However, when you're stretching, I'm going to go into an adjustment of levels. It's looking at the whole image, this whole image. And you can see everything squashed over to the left-hand side. Well, if you start playing with that, you blow out Jupiter and everything else. So I could mask it, but I have found the fastest way to do is just to separate Jupiter. That's a little bigger. I'm just going to separate Jupiter, put the little marching ants around it. 
So now I am only going to be working on Jupiter. The rest of the image is going to stay as it is. And when I go to adjust it now, you'll see the levels are starting to show a little better curve. You're getting your images, the details, and the, the information is stretching out. So I'm going to do some adjustments here. You can click auto. To me, that's a little faint. If you keep your finger down on the alt key, you can reset it. And I start dragging over to bring a little more light to it. And see that green dot that appeared right there? That tells me that I'm starting to blow out the image. If I go too far, I'm blowing it out. I'm blowing the highlights out. So once I see a dot, I stop. This will adjust my midtones, and I like my midtones just a hair darker. So I move my midtones, oops, so, to where I want them to be. I can either make them lighter, going this way makes them darker, going this way makes them lighter. I want mine to sit about there. And at that point, I can say, okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at there. I also will go in and double check my curves and the curves are just your um, your contrast. So again, it's looking like it's not too bad. There's still some detail over here, but it's not looking terribly bad. I like giving everything a little bit of an S curve with my point starting point, stationary point here. So I like to bring things up and down a little. Now I can also go in here and just do a quickie and tell it to do a linear contrast, which is a gentle S curve anyway. And that just gives a little more, I don't know if you can see it, a little more depth to your dark areas and a little more brightness to your light areas without blowing it out of proportion. And I just okay that. It's still not quite as sharp as I want. So I will go up and I will take my filter and I will go to a sharpen. Now, this goes back to photography in, in general. I start out with my unsharp mask. And if I have my unsharp mask set at approximately 85, 84, with the radius in and around 9, I can do a quick sharpen on that. You're not going to see a huge bit, bit of difference, but you can do twice on that and bring out some detail. I do once with that, and then I go back in and I pull up a sharpen. And I will go into Smart Sharpening. And in Smart Sharpening, I'm usually set at 76 and a radius of 0.5. If I pull it up too much, you're going to get a lot of artifacts. And it's going to look terrible. So I will stay there. And I'll come back to in and around there. And that, all that's going to do is give a little bit more sharpness to that, bring out a little bit more detail. And I will say okay to that. When I'm sharpening, however, I'm also bringing out a little bit of noise that I don't want to see. And I have two programs that I use, both for sharpening and unsharpening. I'm not going to use them here, but they are DxO Labs. I use Denoise or Sharpen. And I do like those, and I will use those on some images. But not everybody has those, so I'm just going to stick in with Photoshop because I will do it here as well. If I want to knock out a little bit of noise, I will go in. And you might not see it on your screen, but dust and scratches with a radius of one. I don't know if you can see it, but it just knocks out a tiny wee bit of, of noise without really affecting any details. So I would okay with that. And I deselect. So I've dealt with just Jupiter at this point. Uh, I like having the moons. I like a little bit of context in, in most of my images. So I will go up to this particular tool, which is auto select. But if you right click it, and, and uh, Paul showed me this, you can do a quick selection tool. I keep it a low number. And I'm literally just centering on that area because I would like to brighten up those moons a little bit. I'm adjusting my levels. And it's all over on the dark side. I'm just going to lighten that moon up a bit. Say OK and deselect, and you'll be able to see that I have lightened the moon up from 
here, not making it garishly bright. I'll do the same for that one. It's um, uh, Io and or Eo and Europa. And again, I'll just do the same thing with levels, where I'm going to pull my levels up a little bit. And I can do this multiple times if I if I really want to. And then I select and I deselect. So I can see those moons in the shape that they're supposed to be, yet they're not so bright that they're overpowering or they look artificial, but they were definitely there in the image. So I, I do like them there. Mm. At that point, if I decide, and sometimes I do, because I started out with not doing a, a drizzle to increase the side, I might bump it up and try see what it looks like at 600 and I'm still not unhappy with it at 600. So I've gone from an image that was super blurry and you can't see anything to bringing out some detail. Now I still like to see that red eye a little bit more. So what I did do was I went into my adjustments in hue and saturation and I literally, you can bump it way up, but I literally bumped it up just enough because I was waiting for that eye and I don't know if you can see it on the screen there yeah. but it bumped it up just enough so that I could see that eye because I figured if I waited up for that thing for three or nights to pop around my direction I was going to see it <laughs> <laughs> I deserve to see it absolutely <laughs> and that that was basically it then I just I have a program that I had a little frame around the outside and I I like because I, when I go back to those pictures, I want to know what I have. So I usually label everything that I've got. And that takes me to my image. It's awesome. Awesome. It turned out awesome. so well. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was really pleased with it. Um, yeah, I sure. I'd love to have a lot more detail. This, this was shot with my um, reducer on the end of my telescope. I'm going to take that reducer <laughs> off. I put it on initially because when I went first time I used sharp, sharp capture, I expected as the moment I put the camera on that I was going to actually see Jupiter in the middle of it. And I didn't. And I thought was because I didn't realize I had to start focusing and play with the gain to get it into that position. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I know how to do that and I can do it, I'm going to take the reducer off so that the image will be bigger. Hopefully I'll get a little more detail in it. And I've got another filter coming this week, which I'm hoping will will help it a little bit too. To be capturing what you're getting at 950 millimeters is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my, you know, my camera, my scope is what, 1500? Yeah. So you're using a 0.63, I'm assuming? Yeah, I'm a 6.3 on it and it's taking it down to 900 and something. Yeah, 945 ish. Yeah. yeah, I was pretty happy with that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it, you go I'm higher, sorry. you go to the full 1500, I think you'll see a lot more detail. Plus, your scope is collimated really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's new. I've only, I mean, I didn't use, I got it in the winter. I didn't use it all winter because yeah. of the ice. We had a lot of ice out in our driveway and I have to cart everything out. But I'm really hoping to take it off. Uh, I think tomorrow's going to be nice and another night, nice night this week. So I'm hoping that that's going to work for me. Mm. I mean, your, your, your moons are pinpoint. You know, you've got yeah. no elongation there whatsoever. So your collimation is bang on. Oh, yeah, the moons yeah. all come out beautifully. Yeah. I was, you know, I was really pleased. Super pleased. So you're using yeah. an Altaz scope, right? I'm using an Altaz scope. So yeah. how well was it tracking for you? Like, were you, were you um, good well, that way or was I, it drifting a little bit? Or? Well, when I start out in this screen and Jupiter starts here by the time, or here, by the time I'm finished, it's way down here. <laughs> it is. Okay. Yeah, it but, is. But you're still able to use all those frames. I'm still able to use the frames. They're they're still coming up. That's good because I got a bunch no like that. <laughs> yeah. I tried that the other night, and mine yeah. mine was drifting across the screen. Yeah. Oh, it was all over the place. Yeah. And that's when I started talking to it. And it, you no matter how many times you say sit still for just three minutes. Yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> no, I can't sit still for three minutes either. So, yeah. 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 No, I can't. So, but uh, as I say, it still pulled all those images. Um, when I'm in here, one step I didn't, I missed, and I should say, this is where I've taken it from, from the image after it's gone through Auto Stafford, and we're, sorry, we're into Auto Stafford right now. I have been drawing, this is to tell it what area I want it to match up with, 
Mm -hmm. I've just drawn a box around it and it's worked. One thing I did do is I found that I've got all this extra black space, which I didn't need. Mm -hmm. So I have been switching it down to 480. Okay. There we go. And of course now my box is not over. So I just draw a new box and it, it's, it's followed it, it's kept it, it's matched it up with all those frames, even with the ones that started up here and ended up down here. Wow, okay. Yeah. That, that auto stacker works really well for that. Auto stacker's fabulous. I have yes. not tried fire, sorry, I have not tried Registract other than doing the wavelets when this is working so well for me. And it's, once I got used to it, it's relatively simple. Mm. It's, yeah, it's practice. Not, yeah, yeah. That's why there's all those little pictures on the screen because I just keep practicing and practicing. And I practicing. think we all have those. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. we yeah. fill folders full of practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, hard drives yeah. right full of them. And, and, and the great thing is too is that uh, Registax has their tutorials like you mentioned. So that's that's awesome oh, to know the that they have them right on their own well, site. I think they're on their own site, site, but I would Google something like, um, you know, adjusting wavelets in Registax and mm. I came up with sites from Registrax and okay. directions and it was excellent. That's great. Absolutely excellent because I had no idea what to do with those layers. Mm. So I was randomly shooting them all over the place and ending up with pictures that were so over sharpened and I didn't know why they were over sharpened or what I had done to make them that sharp mm. uh, or what I had done wrong to get them that sharp. So it's just a matter of sitting down and watching some videos and I and you can open registracts along the way and follow right, along. Right. And yes. it's fantastic. Well there you go. So Kathy's Kathy's shown us what we can do now with with uh, with that type it's of a little tiny it's amazing. scope. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's unreal what you can turn out for for uh, for data when you're done. And that's you know that, that image is really uh, really proud of that image behind you. You should be. That's oh amazing. yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm super proud of that image. Great I was quality. so happy with that. Yeah. And, um, uh, aside from you know waiting for that red spot, I was really happy with it. I you know, because our atmosphere isn't like it is, you know, down right at the equator. We're right. not getting the same skies. I was pretty pleased. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, you should be. John, John Colato's on here from uh, upstate New York, he says, in the Adirondacks from the White Pines Observatory. Welcome, John. Uh, he says that uh, in my day, he said, we used to use uh, old 35 millimeter film, no digital. And we were never, and we never got anything that you guys get today. You guys uh, do yeah. get a chance to get some pretty nice stuff. So that's true. I mean, you take pictures. <laughs> I remember Adrian telling us that, and, and Kurt, they go out and take a picture all night long, you know, use a whole film to get it home and then find, oh, no, it was other focus just a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, yeah, I mean, fold film, yeah, today you can look at your photo as soon as you're done and see, okay, that that's what I want or it's not what I want. And, this yeah. well, we've and the thing so is, is not to get discouraged because I was pretty discouraged when I saw the video. Right. <clears throat> I was, like, super discouraged yeah. with that. And then I thought, I'm going to try it anyway. Yeah. And and I'm going to try it the next night. I'm going to try something different. But I was only changing one thing at a time because if you're doing, if you're experimenting on something and you change three things at a time, you don't know which has worked. Absolutely, you know? yeah. So yeah. I um, change one thing at a time. And it's uh, the same way with deep space imaging. You get this, uh, you pull it up and all of a sudden your image is black and you're going, but I got all this information. Why is it yeah, black? Yeah. Until you start manipulating it and it starts coming out in front of you and you're going, wow, how did I get that from this? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing oh, yeah. that that the that the data that you can manipulate is is that is that uh, user friendly to pull out, right? So yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's nice to be able to get it there. Yeah, uh, Harold Locke mentioned too. Uh, nice, Kathy. Uh, he says uh, thanks, Kathy. You've uh, shown me how to streamline my work. So thank you. <laughs> there we go. Just keep working at it because you'll find something that I might do differently and that works for you. But you can do it with a little telescope. Yeah. Oh yeah, amazing. Uh -huh. Thanks so much, Kathy. That's that's awesome. Oh, Absolutely. And I, I'll be playing this back because I'll be sitting there yeah. with mine ready to go. And <laughs> but <laughs> Kathy said this, and that, yeah, I can I can reach out to her anyway. So that's easy. Oh yeah, anybody can. Yeah. There. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I think that was all the questions we had. Uh, wondering what kind of ram. I think somebody answered that. Robert got that. I guess. Um, uh, can I ask a question? Sure. No. Can you ask a question? <laughs> 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 No, I, I, I just want to ask this in uh, in lieu of the people who are watching that maybe think that they didn't want to take this on because it was too difficult. So I just want to ask Kathy, how long 
have you been doing this? <laughs> Not very long. So I have been shooting, I've been photographing for years. That I have been doing. This was totally new. I got my telescope in January. Didn't take it out again much until March when the snow melted. I've only had the little camera, my little ZWO, what, maybe four weeks now? Mm -hmm. and so four weeks, and there was a lot of cloudy weather in that four weeks. Yeah. I what? would probably really? say, yeah, there might have been a few clouds. I would say I've only been doing it. I've only had a half a dozen nights out with it, if that. It's just playing. Yep. So you can do it. It's, it's just being persistent and it doesn't yeah. you don't have to be doing it for a very long time. Yeah. Well, so it turned out so, excellent results. Go ahead. Sorry. So when you're capturing the, the, the frames, you're out there and you get your scope pointed at the moon. Um, how were you tracking the sky? How was I tracking the sky? It was just whatever my, my alt as mount was doing. I let it do. So you've got the six SE. Yeah. Yep, I've got the six SE. Okay, so you've got it running on planetary following the planets. Yeah, on planet, yeah. Or, yeah, or Luna, yeah. 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 Okay, good. So, I, lost, I found Jupiter, I set it on Jupiter, and it just, it followed it to a certain degree. I mean, it, it's not a, an equatorial mount, so again, Jupiter was wiggling itself all over the place. <laughs> uh, but the biggest thing that, if you're working in Photoshop, was to not try to, um, to, manipulate the whole image to yes. isolate only Jupiter mm. because you will not get any results if you try to if you don't put the little marching ants around Jupiter and just adjust locally Jupiter you will not get results yeah. it'll just crash your whole image and you'll just get very very frustrated yeah those marching ants are pretty smart I mean, all, yes, all marching ants are pretty are. smart just don't invite them to your picnic Yes. <laughs> okay thanks very much kathy that's awesome so people you got a chance to replay this back again um of course the show is up and recorded so it'll be here on facebook here on youtube for later so thank you so much for that Absolutely. great yeah. okay let's move from there uh we got a friend there our show now it's 837 let's go to a vinyl bud maybe next let's put this over here and and I'll be sending you my 10 files I captured, Kathy, and I'll, I'll expect them back <laughs> next week sometime. <laughs> Anybody can email me or Facebook me. I don't mind. Awesome. Thanks very much. All righty. We should have final bud. We do. We do. Oh. <clears throat> Locking our target of the week by final bud this week is Davy's dog. <laughs> I saw him today. The store. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> so between uh, the Hades and Pleiades lies a star group just visible with the naked eye or unaided eye. Sorry, Be uh, because Davy's dog is pretty large, you could observe this asterism best with binoculars. Look for a Canis Major shaped Davy's dog lies just north of the constellation Taurus, the Bull. So, if you went outside, and it's about 11 o'clock because uh, it's still low on the horizon, but it's starting to climb at around 11. If you look 90 degrees to the east and you look up, you will see the Pleiades Cluster, or the Seven Sisters, as some people call it. And you may see Taurus. You'll definitely see Aldebaran, the Eye of the Bull. And you come straight up from him, and there is this baby's dog. So, there's his little ears, nose, feet coming down, and a tail. There's a photo shot of it. You've got Aldebaran here, and you've got Pleiades here, and there's our dog right in here. Yes, sir. Again, what you will see, oh, there's those colored stars again. <laughs> it's a beautiful area to shoot because there's all kinds of color in there. He likes the color. So 10 by 50 binoculars, this is what you're looking at. So it's a pretty big target. It's pretty easy to spot, and it does stand out from the background stars. If you look at a full moon again, and we put it across there, oh, I think you can stretch six full moons across. So you definitely see it with a pair of binoculars. It's nice and big. You can't miss it. And uh, I hope everybody gets out and tries to capture it because it's really cool to look at. Hmm. Awesome. And our global mistake has been corrected. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're going to flat earth. <laughs> And that's Bino Bud Target of the Week. Uh, gotta love Bino yeah, Bud. Gotta love Bino Bud, yep. Thanks so much, Mike. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do we want to do a Rosanna's fun fact next, Paul? Uh, no, you can do some photos, maybe. What's up, maybe? Or, uh, or photos? Well, you got or... a photo and a what's up? I got, I got a what's up and a photos, yeah, but we can do either can one. Do you want... Are you ready for Are you ready for Rosanna? Why don't you do Rosanna talk, and then we'll do photos at the end, and I'll save the WhatsApp for sometime through the week. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm ready for Rosanna. Okay. Just give me a second here to prepare my sale because I have to um, move a bunch of stuff around here. Okay. Let's see if I can't do this. And where did Rosanna go? She's always hiding on me. There it is. But that word should be over dar. That there don't works good. Okay, and that should be it, other than the music. And I got to share. So let me share my screen. Figure out how to do that. Entire screen. This one. Hey. And. And we have no sound. Try that again. One second. There we go. Yeah. Rosanna's fun fact. Yay. Yay. Rosanna, how are you? So Rosanna, as usual, has a very timely um, fun fact. And we couldn't put that one off this week because she says, hi, Paul, let's talk turkey. <laughs> 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 Oh, she's, she's so clever. It's unbelievable. So she says, um, let's see if I can get, the, get this right. Which way is it going to go this way? There we go. So she says, out of the 88 constellations, nine are feathered, but none are really suitable for your Thanksgiving plate unless you have some reason you need to eat crow. <laughs> Corvus, the crow, okay? Can, uh, can, you list, uh, <clears throat> can you list nine? So in addition to the crow... There is a dove, an eagle, a swan, a crane, a peacock, a toucan, bird of paradise, and the mythical phoenix. I did read somewhere that tundra swan and crane are tasty, but neither are a traditional dish in, the nor in North America. Personally, Cygnus makes me think of the, of the ballet. What do you think of that, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> so even the swans are plentiful. Nice try. Nice <laughs> It never crossed my mind to eat one. <laughs> so a turkey dinner, some trimmings have definitely made it into space on the ISS. These dinners take place in November, near or on the American Thanksgiving Day. The largest gathering for the Thanksgiving celebration was in 2009. And it was also the most diverse group with 12 astronauts from United States, Russia, Belgium, and Canada. And for those of you involved in all the prep work unnecessary, look at all the stuff. <laughs> so for those of you involved in all the prep work necessary for this Thanksgiving weekend, here is a pic of space preparation. What do you think of that? Wow. Now that looks good. Oh. <laughs> oh <that> looks good. <laughs> so, it just doesn't quite provide the same sensory stimulation. A word to the wise, sometimes an abbreviated Google query turns up the unexpected. Did <laughs> 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 you hear one clear sky? Happy uh, Thanksgiving, and that is this week's. <laughs> <laughs> Rosanna's hey, that's hey. awesome. Hey. Who is cooking turkey tomorrow? <laughs> awesome. That's a great one. She oh, is wow. so clever. It wow. just amazes me. Turkey's in space. Blub, 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 blub. Blub, 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 blubs, yeah. Blub, 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 blub. Wow. We had globular clusters, yeah. And some people think that I don't like globular, globular oh, clusters. Yeah. And uh, however I do, I just don't take pictures of them. <laughs> 
or galaxies or <laughs> star clusters or, <laughs> or M40. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be M40. <laughs> uh, galaxy season's coming. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, thank you, Roseanne. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Uh, awesome. awesome. Thanks so much. Very timely. Yep. Okay, let's. Uh, what do we got? 8:45. I might be able to squeeze in this and the photos. So let's let's go real quickly through. Uh, Lead the way. Uh, what's up this week? Okay. Let me try this. Uh, share my screen. And we'll go with this one. And we'll go here and go here and I'll go. Let's see what this does. Slideshow. Uh, we're beginning. Hey, how's that? That's showing up. There we are. Hey, okay, all right. All right, we'll go through this real quick because we got some. We got lots of photos here to share too. So, uh, what's going to be up this week? Coming up in the next uh, week. Let's see what what is coming up. Oh, wait. Okay, hang on. <laughs> we got to close two. Oh, oh, this does this every time. It blocks someone. Okay. Anyway, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Monday night. Tomorrow night. Um. From Monday night, uh, October the 4th, actually, to the 18th, we still have the zodiacal light to deal with. Uh, the zodiacal light is the cone of eerie light that we talked about last week, above the sunrise or sunset points on the horizon. You'll see it just before morning dawn breaks or after the evening twilight ends. This time of the year, we see it in the morning, uh, before dawn in the autumn, mm -hmm. uh, or in the west in the evening, early spring. So the zodiacal light is that light that's cast from billions of pieces of space dust that are out in our solar system. We talked about last week saying that uh, they believe now that most of it is being caused by the global dust storms that happen on Mars, and they send dust out into space. Uh, so that's still available uh, as a diacal light in our morning sky, uh, looking to the east. You need to be in a really dark spot to pick that up, but it's rare to, to see it. Uh, we haven't got a whole lot of photos. I do know somebody that's going to send me a photo next week on it, so I'll be looking forward to that. Okay. Um, Monday night as well, the shadow of Ganymede okay. on Jupiter. Here we go again, Kathy. Here you go, Kathy. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Hooray. Guess who's going to be outside? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so so look at this. So there's the, the shadow of uh, Ganymede this time, and there it is right there, right in the middle at 930. Oh. All right. And look over here. Here's the red spot, too. So you got them both. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we can witness Ganymede's shadow as it passes over the clouds of Jupiter between 8 and 1130 p.m., uh, Atlantic time. Telescope is required really to see it. Um, binoculars, you'd see a tiny Jupiter and four little moons, but that's all you'd see. Uh, the Great Red Spot, of course, is visible too from 9 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. Uh, Tuesday. So we've got that for a good three hours as it, as it crosses across the giant planet. Uh, so that's Monday night. Um, also Monday night, uh, the moon's sitting in Sagittarius, uh, just above the spout of the teapot there. So... Uh, this is a great spot for the moon to uh, be because, first of all, we've got we want to bring out our binoculars and take a look at Sagittarius and the area that leads us to the center of the Milky Way. So, to the right of the moon is the center of the Milky Way. That's right in this area here, and it's a perfect time really to check out the moon with binos and then move along to the treasures of the night sky. Look at all these. What are all these, Paul? These are all nebula and some star yeah. clusters. Look over here. Oh, what's that? That's a globular cluster, and there's one over here. <laughs> <laughs> They're even in there, too. So we've got all that. Oh, like These are just some of the treasures that are still here in our southwestern part of the sky. So, yes, we are turning away from the center of the Milky Way, but we've still got this part lined up. So if you get to a nice dark sky, the moon is setting early um, around these next few nights. Of course, it's going to be sitting right there when you're looking in that direction, but... It's still a waxing crescent, so it'll set fairly early. So if you want to stay out later, you'll get a chance to see all of this stuff as well. So just bring binoculars out, take a look at the moon, and then just pan up this area here, and you wouldn't believe what you see. The star clusters, the colored stars, the globular clusters are so beautiful. Aren't they, Paul? They are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There we go. I do. Look, we, we tease a lot on the show. Um, we have to. So uh, Tuesday, the first quarter moon. <laughs> Never do. <laughs> you have to. You're going to be on the show. Okay. So. I wear the hat, don't I? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, our first quarter moon comes on Tuesday night. Uh, that's when the moon is 90 degrees away from the sun in the sky and is half illuminated from our point of view. So we call it first quarter moon because the moon has traveled about a quarter of the way around the Earth since it was the new moon. 
Uh, and that's a wonderful time, of course, to cruise along that Terminator line, this line that separates day and night along the moon. Right along here, you're going to see the most detail uh, because these are areas where sunlight is coming in from this side. It's causing long shadows in the walls of these craters along these mountain ranges here. Yes, there are mountains on the moon. And uh, you'll get to see a lot more detail right along here. And tomorrow, uh, the day after that, of course, is when we start to see things like the straight wall. And those are, those are appearing the next day. So good time to be out looking with binoculars. Uh, Wednesday. Um, another look at this one. Oh, <laughs> uh, giggity giggity goo. Uh, <laughs> giggity giggity, 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 giggity. Really? <laughs> uh, wow. There we go. So Wednesday, another shadow transit. Io this time. Little tiny Io passing in front of the great uh, 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 great planet. And Io will leave its shadow on the clouds of Jupiter from 7.45 to 10.02. So that's a long time because it's such a tiny planet too, right? So it'll have a little tiny shadow running across the, the clouds of Jupiter there. And Jupiter's red spot is visible right around 11 o'clock. So if you want to wait till, um, uh, you might get, you, you'll know you won't get the shadow on the red spot. Scene. You want to wait till, do it Monday night instead. Anyway, that's another view that you've got. If, if it's cloud tomorrow night, you've got another chance here on Wednesday night. Uh, Thursday evening, uh, we've got beautiful Jupiter, Saturn, and our moon all gathered together here to make a nice celestial triangle. Really, that's going to be a really pretty sight right there. A waxing gibbous moon now. We're past the first quarter, so the moon's getting larger. And Saturn now is uh, its a little bit harder to see, but you'll be able to pick it out when you know you're looking for a triangle shape here. Because Saturn is about 1 20th as bright as Jupiter right now. Uh, Jupiter's about a minus 2.7, and Saturn's about a plus 0.5, so mm -hmm. that brings them about 20 times dimmer than Jupiter is. So we've got uh, the second brightest object in the sky right here, our waxing moon. Our Venus is on the other end of the sky. That's our, our third brightest, and Jupiter is our fourth brightest object. So take a look for this really nice trio here, just as nice as that Venus and the, and, uh, the moon was there last night. Really pretty. Uh, we move ahead to uh, the weekend now. So on Saturday, Venus is going to be placed just uh, less than two degrees above the red giant star Antares. And that's uh, the eye in Scorpius. Uh, check, him, uh, check them out both with binoculars to see the color contrast. So you're going to see a really reddish, uh, orangey type star here with the brilliant uh, white Venus here beside it. Yellowish, maybe even color. Uh, and it'll be at, uh, it's at about uh, half a phase, I guess, right now. So still very nice areas of the sky. Venus is very easy to pick out. It's the brightest object in the western sky right now. Minus 4.7, so that's very, very bright. Uh, so that's a good object for a Saturday night. And don't forget, too, if you wanted to get updates on all this kind of stuff, go to sjastronomy.ca. That's our website, um, St. John Astronomy Club. On the site, on the right-hand side, is this calendar. You can click on the calendar, download it, and that's what I did tonight to bring this up for you. And all of this is all, lo all uh, recorded here. So we've got the red spot, as I talked about. When you see these uh, 1, 2, and 3, 1 is uh, Io, 2 is Europa, 3 is Ganymede, 4 is Callisto. And then EC means eclipse, TR means a transit, SA is a shadow, so we can see that. On Wednesday night, Io is going to have a shadow on Jupiter from 1945 to 2202. Then we have the Jupiter-Saturn moon conjunction and Venus over Antares, what I just talked about. So every week, right through October to November, till the middle of November is, is all listed here on that site. So you can download that calendar and print one out for yourself. And don't forget about this. Lisa's look up. Lisa uh, Fanning is on our page here quite often. Lisa has her own Facebook page as well. It's called Lisa's Look Up, Astronomy and More. You can find Lisa at... Uh, facebook.com slash ruby moonbeams and lisa posts this uh, uh beautiful uh, uh schedule every month Lee, what to look for in the month of october so lisa has all these items that i mentioned too she also has a straight wall mentioned here on the 14th and mercury and, and jupiter being stationary the full moon so she lists more things than i had listed but go to her page as well i, I uh, highly recommend her page and she has a lot of nice stuff out there too so that's what to look for this week in our evening sky and from there <laughs> We're probably going to go to. Uh... <laughs> there. And from there, we're going to go to some photos. Wow. I'm not going to stop presenting. I'm going to go right to photos, I guess. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see if I can get the photos now. I want to keep going because we're running out of time. We're at about six minutes left. I think we can squeeze them in. Okay, here oh, we go. Ah, oh, we got time. People yeah. hey, always good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody who's, loves who's doing anything tonight? I mean, tomorrow's a holiday. Who's doing anything? Anyway? Just top right? up the coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if 
Next uh, sec, I gotta choose the right up every time it asks me. Okay, Windows Photo Viewer, that's what we want. Okay. Well, let me drag these over in the right screen. And we should be displaying it there now. Yeah. We still can't get the right the right photo viewer program because it has all this white around it, but this is Windows Photo Viewer, so I guess it's probably the best I can do at the moment. Anyway, we've got these pictures from Jeff Legier. Jeff said, uh, seems that I'm getting a little better at finding stuff, he says. He's uh, found M45 and uh, M31 here as well. Nicely done, Jeff. Very nice. Good stuff. Yes, yep. I like that. That's, you're on the road, pal. <laughs> Keep yes, at sir. it. And uh, he also sent in this one, uh, says, uh, this is photo is the same moon as the one in name B, but it was taken this week in Arctic Bay, Nunavut, by my son, uh, Michelle. Oh, Michael wow. or Michelle, I'm not sure. Uh, a, hydrogra a hydrographer presently on a Coast Guard icebreaker cruising the Northwest Passage. Wow. Uh, he spends wow. his, no, so well, I like this part. He spends his days looking at the ocean floor, but he does look up occasionally. So that's perfect. <laughs> 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 I love to hear that. Uh, good stuff. Thanks very much, uh, Jeff, for those. And uh, thanks to your son as well for sending that along. Uh, Lisa Fanning sent these in. Uh, she's, hi, Chris. Uh, we didn't have much luck with the 2% moon on Thursday evening. We lost it in the trees. But we did have a great look at the ISS flying by. Uh, it was the brightest I've ever seen it, she said. Yeah, she posted uh, a cool video there. Oh, did she? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can do this a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, oh, a little better. Go out there. Um, anyway, uh, she's, I was able to snag some photos from video I took as it was in conjunction with three planets. Now, the whole flyover lasted about seven minutes, she said. And the ISS uh, transits never do get old. You're right there, Lisa. Oh, I, yeah. I enjoy yeah. them all the time. I missed it here for some reason. I tried to offer it the other night, and I don't know what happened to it. But It was behind you. <laughs> it, I hope not. <laughs> you know, knowing me, yeah, it could have been. <laughs> I, I'm all lined up, all ready to show people, and all of a sudden, what the? Where is it? Yeah. And then somebody else said, oh, it's already set. So too bad. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Here's her oh, second yeah. picture passing by Jupiter and Saturn. So wonderful. Very nice. Thanks uh, for sharing those, oh, Lisa. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, let's get back here to uh, oh, go this way. Uh, next up, we have uh, Jamie Why not? has sent us in some photos. These are really nice. Uh, Jamie says, hi, Chris. I managed oh, to yeah. take photos of the waxing crescent moon on Thursday. So there's the very thin moon that uh, we, we caught Thursday evening. Yeah. And she also got it on Friday and Saturday night, which I can share here. There's her Friday photo. Well, that's pretty. A little bit bigger, right? And then Saturday night, of course, with Venus. In the shot, so that, that was a really nice, another really nice setup there uh, on Saturday night. The crescent moon and Venus, so that was just no, awesome. Something. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I was heading up to the west side, going across the River Falls Bridge, and I looked over. Oh, 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 wow! And then I had to turn my eyes back to the road again. But I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the ISS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Behind me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, she says the, the first two were taken through binoculars using the Celestron NextYZ adapter. Those are amazing for binoculars. And my iPhone 8, she said, and the last one is of Saturday night's conjunction with Moon and Venus with just the phone. So very well done. Yeah. Uh, this past week has been great for observing, she says, and, that, and has been for sure. We've been really treated uh, this past week with some nice, uh, with some nice guys for sure. Okay, let's go from there. We're going to go to uh, Cecile McLeod sent these ones in. And Cecile says, let me open that up a little bit. Um, sunrise, the sun sure rises fast, she says, in beautiful St. Andrews. Uh, wow. Quality is not as good as it is from inside our motorhome with, it, with my cheap cell phone. But this is what I woke up to on Wednesday, she said, and the sky was so beyond beautiful last evening, especially with Saturn and Jupiter. So she sent us a few shots of the capture there. And there's the next shot with wow. a little bit larger. Very nice. And, and again. That's oh, that's it's, lovely. It's, yeah. It breaks through. So, yeah, it comes up pretty fast, for sure. How the sun rises so quickly, like, it's just, you're, you're waiting for it, and all of a sudden, within 30 seconds, it's up, and same thing as the moon setting, I guess. So, you don't realize how quickly you're spinning until you see that happen. Uh, thanks very much for those, uh, Cecile. Appreciate that. Uh, Matthew Dupre sent this one in. Matthew says, uh, the shadow of Isle on Jupiter, Tuesday night. Nice. Look at that. Nice. There you go. Nice Good capture. Stuff. Yeah. 
You said captured around 1120 uh, using a Celestron 9 and a quarter, a three times Barlow, and an ASI 224 camera with the UVIR filter. Right there's, on. there's your filter, Kathy. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Kathy has one of those uh, on the way, so good stuff. Okay, uh, thanks so much for that, Matthew. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah now. Jeremiah Harding sent these in from last night. He said the second pick is the okay. The second pick is California Nebula. Uh, looking forward to getting some nice pictures of the Orion Nebula this winter. Uh, picks were taken with a Rebel T6 mounted to a star uh, tracker, um, ISO 800. Exposure time 12 minutes. Uh, and f-stop was uh, f4 with the kit lens. So yeah, 12 minutes. I mean, with there's very wow. little, uh, very very little nice. trailing going on there. Uh, and that's the thing about those star trackers, right? They're they're just so awesome to to keep uh, keep things in it's focus. A polar and, alignment for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well done for 12 minutes. Look at the stars, eh? Wow. Unreal. Very nice. Thank you for those, Jeremiah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna keep going. We're moving. We're moving right along, but we're closing in, and we're after nine o'clock now too. So I want to make sure oh, I get everybody's right, photo here. We'll just keep going. Okay, okay, we'll keep going. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, everybody, we'll everybody, everybody, staying by. That's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Paul Crowder sent this one over. Hey, Paul. Uh, he says greetings from the UK. Uh, hi, Chris. Once again, looking forward to this evening's show. Attached is my poor effort in capturing today's sun. I'm really fumbling in the dark, but at least I am slowly collecting a record of sunspot activity. Clear sky. I don't think you're fumbling at all there. That's no. amazing. Beautiful. Nice, That's nice yeah. detail. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, That's you nailed it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Staring right back at us. Look at that. So, yeah, there's going to be a, there may be a chance for Aurora too tomorrow night. I wanted to mention mm -hmm. that. Um, they are calling for a KP of six right now. So, uh, that's tomorrow evening. But uh, I might not get a chance to mention all that. I'll, I'll probably go live tomorrow night right after supper and talk a little bit about what's coming up through the week. Uh, but anyway, there. Thanks very much, Paul, for that. Nice shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Trudy sent these in. Oh, Trudy Allman. <clears throat> Look at this, eh? Yeah, I wow. love that spot. What a spot. That's beautiful. So oh, she man. said, uh, this is October 3rd between Ooh. 720 and 735. It's a stack of six sunrise photos using star stacking program just to see what it would look like. It looks good. <laughs> I'd, I'd say you nailed it. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Look at the, look at the stack. Where is here. That? Yeah. That's uh, that's at Forbes Beach. It's called in Gardner Creek. Oh, that's gorgeous. So that's this place. Uh, that's Split Rock, right? So yep. you'll get the opportunity when the sun will rise right there. Well, I guess the moon would be rising there as well. So she I she has captured that. For reflection. Yeah, oh. right up right up here too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right along the water. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Good stuff. It looks really good. Nice. Very nice. Great job, Trudy. And this one, she's captured of uh, yeah. Moonrise. Uh, Beautiful. That was on October the 5th at 6.23 a.m., she said. So that's the waning crescent, of course. Um, one hour and 21 minutes before sunrise. Look at the earth shine. And it was, uh, yeah, the moon, right, moon was only at 1.65% right then. So very, very tiny. Yeah. yeah. But nice stuff. Well done. Both taken to Forbes Beach and Gardner Creek. So keep an eye on that spot, folks. We want to Google map that one. You can sure see where the sun was, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> right there, yeah. Boom. <laughs> so, so apparent there, right? They actually, they say that the Earth shine now that's shining back onto the moon, that we that we send back onto the moon, has actually gotten, um, I think they said, about 3% less in the last yep. 20 years. Because that. because of the cloud mm -hmm. cover that that mm -hmm. we experience over our planet, it's changing our reflection back onto the moon. So wow. hmm, I haven't noticed it, but <laughs> but I guess you can. Um, anyway, uh, we going to Mr. Gadet right now, Robert. Oh yeah. Hey, Robert. And there is another shot, uh, Moon and Venus last night. Awesome shot there, Robert. Nice shot, Rob. Well done. Very good. Hard to get that Venus popping out when you get the moon like that as well. So, and here's his capture of Saturn. So Ooh, he's, well working, on, he's yeah. working away at this too, eh? Yeah. yeah. Did a good job on that. Oh, well test, done. Test shot in Saturn. I'm a happy camper. I would be too, for sure. Yeah, yeah. sir. I would be too. <laughs> the senior division there and lots of bands and very nice. Colors. Very nice done. Well done. Yeah. And that's what you can do with that uh, with that stuff that Kathy was talking about. So, here's yeah. his Jupiter shot. Nice. Uh, another happy nice. camper picture, he says. Jupiter, same equipment, same acquisition settings, same processing. So, yep. Well done. He's Very well done. 
Uh, we're going to go from Robert's photos right. to uh, Stefan Picard. Stefan. Yeah. And oh, Stefan me, said, uh, yeah. Stefan says, uh, hope you're having a great Thanksgiving weekend, everybody. Uh, here's a couple of captures from this week. First, I was able to fit M31 and M33 in my Canon kit lens. M33 must be here, is it? Yeah, I'm there, yeah. Yeah. Um, set with that 50 millimeter infinity uh, with infinity focus f 4.5 and ISO 3200 daunting to get the framing right but figured it out after a dozen plus shots um, <laughs> yep. yeah, well, that happens sure M31 is in the upper left while M33 near bottom center uh, Mirak one of the key stars of the Andromeda Gal uh, constellation is in dead center yeah right there it's so he said he did 42 frames at 20 seconds each for a total integration time of 14 minutes about 20 darks flats and biases uh, subs added, uh, stack and deep sky stacker, processed in Photoshop, and final touches in Lightroom. Saturation and highlights were pumped up to make both galaxies stand out. As you know, these two galaxies, as well as the Milky Way, make up the local group, a KR Galactic Neighborhood. Right. Yeah. They do stand out. They do, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a second shot of M45's Pleiades. Pleasantly yeah, surprised right, Thursday night as I was about to wrap up to see these cleared uh, trees to my east. Uh, told myself what the heck, and I decided to do 60 frames at 10 seconds each with my telephoto lens at set at 200 uh, millimeters good. with infinity focus. Uh, he said, "Sorry for being so long-winded, but hope uh, most of the viewers on the show understand that everyone can do this if they have a DSLR and a mount, tracking or non-tracking." Mm -hmm. So there you go, and that is true. Get your cameras uh -huh. out. Get get that camera out of the case and get it outside. Yeah. Um, he also added this one. He said, can I add uh, this one to this week's show? Really pleased with this one from Friday evening, uh, M33, uh, captured with some de same details as the Pleiades, but at a total of 150 frames. So, awesome. And nice sharp stars. Yeah. Yeah, stars are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Very well done. Wow. Oh, yeah, well done. Thanks, Stefan. Okay, we're going to move into some shots. So I posted a quick picture of the moon and Venus last night just with my cell phone from the beach because I saw it and I had to stop and get a picture and throw it up and then I tried to do a live feed and there was one cloud I, the whole sky the whole sky was completely open all the way around me the Milky Way was beautiful Sagittarius I could see I could see Venus I could see Saturn I could almost pick out the moons of Jupiter with my own eyeballs and there was one cloud about six times the width of the moon that sat directly in front of the moon Should I uh, and I wasn't not, I wasn't frustrated at all. Oh my god! Very happy to be there. That was huh? the moon shadow. That was the moon shadow. Moon shadow. Moon shadow. Yeah. It was, it was your fault. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Bonnie Barton shared this one. Uh, so I put that picture up, and people were starting to put their pictures up on my page. So I love that. Like when I put up a photo, and somebody comments underneath of the photo, of theirs awesome. Love it. Yeah. Uh, so Bonnie Barton put this one up from Minto. Awesome, Bonnie. Wow. Look at that nice uh, Earthshine sitting there, too. Oh. Uh, we got this one from Barb Murray. Wow. There you go, Barb. Awesome. Nice shot. Uh, uh, Carol Bean sent this one in from St. Stephen. Wow. That's Ooh, great. Crater. Yeah, nice detail. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. Mercurium sitting right there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Olton uh, sent this one along. Again. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Great shots, everybody. Uh, we got this one from, uh, that was from Baxter Corner, and Emily Stewart sent this one in. Yeah, Venus, never gets old looking at that little right thin there. slice. Yeah, she got Venus sitting right there below it. Right. Good stuff, even in daylight like that, bright. I love the blue moon, blue sky moon. Yeah. You got something. Yeah. Uh, we got this from, uh, from Karagnet, uh, Elena. That's cool. Right off the, right off the gutter right of the house. Water spout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tiana Stafford sent this one in. Wow. Moon and Venus again. And we've got another capture from Clayton Carr. Beautiful shot. Oh, pretty. Very pretty. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got another here from Colleen Gallagher. Wow, everybody's awesome. was... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Like, this is just, this, this just warms my heart when I see these. Like, people commenting and putting their photos up is so amazing, I think. It's we're, re we're you know I feel like we're reaching people so that's great. All right, awesome. <laughs> Colleen Colleen Gallagher's picture there was from Harvey Al uh, Albert County at 7:40 p.m. She says, and um, we get next I've got uh, Yvonne Rudiger sent her picture in here as well. Very so, nice, very I like nice. That. So thanks so much for all those folks. I really enjoyed the fact that you uh, contributed those photos. Uh, Patty Millette, hey we know Patty. 
Wow. Uh, you, uh, got this picture of the stars over the city. There's Pleady sitting yeah. there. Awesome shot, Cat, uh, Patty. Look at Taurus. Just big yeah, bang. right there. Big bang, bang. Yeah. There comes Orion. <laughs> it's yeah. coming. Yep. It's on its way. Very soon. Um, and she said, uh, I figured you'd appreciate these. I don't like how Saturn turned out, though. She said, we stole this stuff. LOL. I, I think it turned out. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. Yeah. They love it. Love it. <laughs> it's fantastic. There's another one. Wow. They're all done. Yeah, good stuff. I oh, those look nice right here on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <coughs> and finally, uh, we're going to get to uh, Renat's. Yeah, so Renat sent this one beautiful. in. She calls this uh, October Lights, the first sign of frost. It's an 18 by 24 acrylic on stretch canvas. Um, she calls it uh, endings, isolation, migration, and pandemic reality. The suspension of time stretching the autumnal spider web of northern rustic landscapes. Our sparkling stars of clear nights are dimmed in cool morning sun as wood smoke wafts along the river in rustic northern settings. First signs of frost, frost push insects and flies toward the promising warf, warmth indoors, while flocks of Canadian geese fly noisy formations away from here. And uh, wow. that's that's called October Lights. Wow. And, uh, of course, her work is available at renatart.com. So check her out. She's got some really nice stuff out there. Love that. I that's love these. Yeah, I love these uh, abstracts. They're beautiful. Yeah. Well, her colors are so vibrant. Uh, oh, they are. Just, yeah, just that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Very well done. Thanks, Renat. Oh. And, oh, hang on. i got to go back to one more, I think. Yeah, I did have one more. And I'll just open it. Uh, this, uh, it was just to say that you can send your photos into SundayNightAstronomyShow at gmail.com where we love to get them and we love sharing them, as you can see. And uh, we're very pleased that we get a chance to, to do all that. So thanks so much for everybody for those. Paul, you had a, uh, a picture you wanted to share. Yeah, I was just I'm going to stop to presenting by. here. I'm going to share it. Uh, We're going to continue on, folks. Just give us another few minutes. We're almost done. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I, I'm it's ready to go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'll just pop it up here. Uh, I'm going to move it over onto the screen first. Okay. And then I'll pop, pop it up. Because I just want to, uh, I just finished it. <laughs> oh, and I think it's kind of cool. So uh, let's see here. So entire screen, and I just want to explain what it is because there's a feature in this that I had I wasn't aware of until I started processing it, and I started going online looking at various uh, 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 renditions of this image so that I have something to refer to when I was starting to put it together. So let me just share my screen and uh, wait for that to come up here. There it is. And I'm just going to ignore this. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the uh, the Crescent Nebula. And what, what, where's that found, Chris? I think it's in... Uh, uh, Sagittarius? <laughs> Orion, Orion. Signatarius. I can't, <laughs> I can't even say the word, no. <laughs> That's anyway, it's not a globular cluster and it's not Leo, so it's in... <laughs> I wouldn't know it. And it is blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm going to turn off my uh, headset right now. <laughs> but anyway, you know, what I wanted to point out in this nebula, which I find extremely interesting, is there's actually two nebulas there. Uh, there of course, there's the um, there's the Crescent Nebula, which is, you know, in itself a very amazing looking nebula. But if you look right behind it, there is what they call the soap bubble, which is right back here. And uh, this is probably one of the coolest things I've seen. I've heard of it before. And I think uh, Chuck from Chuck's, um, Chuck Aod uh, from uh, Chuck's uh, Astro, he shot it and he talked about this bubble and I forgot all about it. So I started seeing it today. So I was, uh, while we were here, I was kind of working away to, to make this bubble a little bit more evidence, but you can certainly see it now. I don't oh, think yeah. I have to make it too big to see it, but there it is. That's what they call the soap bubble nebula. Isn't that something? I don't even know about it until you just mentioned it tonight. I wonder if there's, yeah. would there be a globular cluster inside that bubble? <laughs> it might be an open cluster. It might not be a globular. It might but... not be transparent, so it could be something yeah. underneath it. Oh, Can you my... see the bubble? You can only hope. It's almost transparent, like a bubble. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Do we know what causes it, Paul? Is it like yeah. a is it a, a remnant I, of some sort, or? Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna research it because I'm not sure how it was actually formed. Yeah. But it, it would be the same kind of, there's a, some kind of a wind thing going on. 
some radiation and wind going on with it. And it's the same idea as what is what is actually the bubble nebula. The bubble nebula, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I would yeah. I guess my question would be. Is it like the bubble nebula? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same sort of thing. So I just found it rather cool uh when I was processing it. I said, What's that? <laughs> and then, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then anyway. So oh, right on. Right. And that's a beautiful awesome. shot, Paul. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Thank you nice. very much. Yeah. Look at the detail. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, I shot that last night and uh, about five and a quarter hours. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I was going to go for 10 hours, but uh, this time of the year, after about two in the morning, then you get that big belt of haze that just yeah. comes yeah. in because our days are warm and our nights are really cool. Yeah. And it just it just happens to be, and it seems wherever you're close to any kind of water, because I'm not far from the river, uh, that comes up. So I was only got about half the time on it that I wanted to, but. But in any event, uh, I thought the bubble was was quite cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's, nice. awesome. that's a nice shot. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And I was going to share one other thing that I've got right here. So there's a photo that Paul had in the Sky News yeah. magazine this month. Oh, I saw oh, yeah. There you go. Hey, so yeah. that's that's Paul's photo at uh, Partridge Island. Yeah. Uh, of the moon. Well, as a matter of fact, that night, Chris, you and Mike were down the other end. Of the, you guys are down at um, St. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes, yeah. and uh, and I went down to there because I was talking to you guys. How do I find? Uh, and remember, you <laughs> yeah. showed me on on the thing. This yeah. is where you need to be. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Google Maps and where. Anyway, and it worked out perfectly. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Well, to be, so. Congratulations to anybody. Congratulations. Who's yeah. Right yeah. in there. Thank awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think. Uh, I do take pictures of the moon. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. That's a consolation prize. Yep. <laughs> They give you an E for effort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to we got to talk about that all the time. Yes, we do have to. Anyway, okay, let's uh, let's go back. Okay, so first of all, before we close out tonight, I want to mention next week's show. Okay, um, now last week we talked about our choices of telescopes. I was talk I haven't talked to these guys about it yet, but I think they're probably online with it or along with it anyway. We talked about choices of telescopes. Our our kind of choices for a Christmas present down the road, maybe for yourself or for your loved one or whatever. Um, now, next week, we'd like to talk a little bit more about Christmas goodies. So maybe it is magazines, and maybe it is books, and maybe it is uh, uh, astronomy type of gifts, uh, stocking stuffers, that type of thing. So we're going to talk about what is a good gift other than a telescope for someone for Christmas. Because that's just around the corner, and you want to put your orders in now because things are really backed up uh, as far as back orders mm -hmm. go. So, yeah. So we'll talk about that next week. Uh, so in closing then tonight, I um, want to first of all say thanks so much for Kathy for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, you know, okay. you know, Very nice to have you. Yep. No, Very Kathy, that... Uh, everybody absolutely. Everybody old guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an old girl. <laughs> That's right. You old guys. <laughs> yeah, you old guys. <laughs> I hope I'll be able to pick up your skill set, uh, and please know that you're always welcome to go back and join us at any time. So please, uh, oh, thank you. please know that. Uh, absolutely. Offer, absolutely great. You always have an open, offer, open offer there. So, okay, and uh, we want to say our special thanks as well to Rosanna for her co continued contribution to the show, of oh, course. Yeah. Thank you, Rosanna. Uh, always, always like those, and uh, really do appreciate you all your efforts. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, like to thank all um, all those people who share our program for us, like Trudy Almond, our, our favorite uh, share right there. Emmy Stormer Weather Center shares a lot. Uh, Lisa, Lisa's look up has shared. Uh, everybody else who's sharing it, we really do appreciate getting that word out for us. So, uh, remember too, we do love getting your photos. So send them into Sunday Night Astronomy Show at gmail.com or just send them into my Facebook page. I collect them all, as you can see, and we love to display them. So, I uh, would like to see what you uh, what you're producing out there. Also, uh, asking for uh, suggestions for future, to, uh, future shows for topics. Uh, so let us know if you have anything that you'd like us to discuss on one of the episodes. We're always open to ideas for that. Um, also, that if you joined us uh, from uh, YouTube tonight and you enjoyed the content, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And please let your family and friends know, too, that we are here every week at the same time to educate, entertain, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's all about the night sky anyway, so I mean, sometimes the daytime sky. So for now, then, first of all, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, yeah. Hope you really enjoy it. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and from Kathy and Mike and Paul and me, we wish you all clear skies. Uh, hope to see you all again here next week. And as we like to say, folks, keep your scopes. Kathy, point it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy, th happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Where my finger go? <laughs> <laughs> and cue the music. <laughs> there we go.
And it's bubbling time.